Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I love to ask questions, and I think most of you are probably as curious as I am. But today, the question is, how is the financial health of your business? It's a big question. And depending on where you are and what your thinking is and how you frame your thinking around your business and your finances, it can be a game changer. Well, we are going to talk all about that today. And my guest, Kristen Hillman, is going to share strategies to reframe how you think about money so that you can relieve stress. Oftentimes, money is a stress factor in business as well as life. So we're going to look at the financial health of your business. Kristen's going to give us some strategies so that you can begin to reframe your thoughts and hopefully establish more sound, reasonable, and achievable financial goals within your business. Kristen Hellman, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you, Robin, for having me. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. So am I, we've had other episodes on money mindset, as I mentioned to you before, and I think it's something that as women, many people struggle with, but they don't even realize they're struggling with it. So I am really happy that you're here and can kind of walk us through some of these strategies that will help us reframe our thinking around money. And especially, I think, as Christian women, we're, you know, we're taught not to idolize, not to love Mm -hmm. money and all these Mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And it's really important for us to be able to accept the fact that abundance is welcome. And, you know, through our life in Christ, we, we get abundance and not just financially, but we can't have any sort of abundance if we have a negative mindset around what abundance means. So I'm super excited to have the conversation as well. But before we dive in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? Yes, absolutely. So when, um, I, Graduated from college with an accounting degree, went into the accounting industry. I worked in corporate finance for a very long time, um, almost 20 years. I was a controller and a CFO at private equity companies. Um, I loved my career. I Because I worked in private equity, it's kind of the wild west of business. It's not as structured. Um, it's a little bit more creative in terms of finances in that world. Um, So I learned to look at financial health of businesses in a different way. And when I had my children, I desired more flexibility with my time and started my own business, started consulting. And then my business now, Viticula Financial, is an opportunity for me to bring my worlds together. Um, All of that financial experience where I can, you know, look at financial reporting. And to me, it tells a story. I can see what's going on in your business and I can help you figure out the next steps. But it also is pairing with my passion for women specifically that have an opportunity to build a thriving business with so much flexibility. You know, when I started my career, there was, you either went back to work or you stayed at home. And there really was no option for women who wanted to maybe raise their children or have more flexibility. And, you know, even this world pre COVID, but post COVID, even more so. And so it's my passion to help women who have this opportunity now actually make it worth it and really help them figure out how to be financially healthy, how to make it worth the time of all this, that energy and effort that they're pouring into their business to make it profitable. There's nothing wrong. We should be here making a profit, you know, if not, it's just a hobby and let's, you know, call it that. So that's the goal of everything that I do is to really support women in this personal passion that I have um, to grow their businesses and do it in a flexible way that really comes back to who they are and what their passions are um, and really what drives them. Mm, I love all of that so much. And I mean, as a, as a business coach, that's, you know, our missions are aligned. It's really helping people be able to have the life that they 
want with Absolutely. their family. And I know for me, that has been absolutely key to be able to be here and be hands-on with my kids throughout their entire lives. And that, yeah. so I love that, that you're helping women do that. So let's dive in. Let's talk about these strategies to reframe our mm -hmm. thinking. And I know you have um, like one thing that you've seen seven figure earners mm -hmm. all have in common. So I'm so excited to dive into these yes. three strategies and then that one thing. For sure. Um, we're just going to start with the one thing. The one big thing that I see specifically with my clients, but even people that I consult with, there is a mental shift from entrepreneur to CEO. And that mental shift has to happen because it, especially because I look at businesses from a financial place, there seems to be a couple revenue thresholds that people get to and they kind of get stuck and they're doing fine there, but they can't get past it. And most of the time there are mental shifts that have to happen. And usually getting up to seven figures, there's two to maybe three of those stages where you've got to shift your thinking a little bit more. And that is hands down the biggest one is going because entrepreneurs, that's when we're doing all the things right? We're bootstrapping. I kind of like to call entrepreneurs scrappy and we're clawing our way and doing all the things, but that can only last for so long. You're going to get to either burnout or you're just running yourself in circles and shifting up to, okay, I love, you know, serving my clients, providing what I provide for my customers, but if I want my business to grow, I need to take a step back and I need to actually shift to running a company and that shift changes everything for, and, and it calms specifically women down, like literally gets into a longer term thought process of how do we shift our thinking to running a business versus serving my clients and being scrappy and watching every dime kind of mindset. Mm. Okay. So do most women that you work with come to you with the CEO mindset or do they come to you as an entrepreneur and you help them shift that mindset? They all come as an entrepreneur. I think it's really hard to get there, especially when you're talking about money um, because people aren't trained how to look at their finances to run a business nor should they be right. We're all experts in the field. I can do that all day long, but I'm not an expert in marketing. I have to bring in help for that. Like I wouldn't even know where to start. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where they bring me in. Like, okay, I'm drowning. And whatever reason, everybody's drowning for some reason, it's either too much work. It's, you know, the growth is happening too fast, or maybe it's the other way is I'm doing all the things and nothing's changing. And so they're all in that entrepreneur mindset. And so that's where we start to work in shifting to a CEO and start talking about the business versus serving the clients. And the business will tell us if serving your clients needs attention. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. So let's talk about that then. Yeah. If, if someone is in the entrepreneurial mindset versus the CEO mindset, mm -hmm. what is the first thing that they need to change. I love how you, I'm mm. backtracking for a second. I love That's how okay. you just said, like some of them are, are coming to you because they're overwhelmed because there's so much work, but others are coming to you because they're doing all the things and nothing's happening. They're not getting right. the results and outcomes they want. So I think I want to focus on the latter because how does that shift in the CEO mindset all of a sudden bring mm -hmm. clients in when it wasn't coming in before? Good question. So one of the very first things, because I'm a CEFO and we look at numbers is we make sure you have financial data because that's going to tell us what's actually happening in the business versus what you think is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and getting that historical information, whether it's from a bookkeeper or whether you've been tracking it in a spreadsheet, making sure that that's telling us something. Um, and we look at it in a very specific way to be able to see, okay, what are your marketing costs in total? What, you know, how does that compare to your revenues? What type of client conversion numbers do you have? 
How much cash do you have? Do you have a cash reserve? All of these financial things we first take a look at and kind of just the status of the union, like, okay, what's happening now and look and see. And typically there are financial metrics that there's a red flag or it's a personal value metric, like time could be a piece of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And we figure out what are the actual red flags in the business and then start diving in, right. As a CFO, I can't fix marketing, but we can fix maybe where all you're spending your money and are you spending it in the right places? And do you need to bring in support or do you have 10 times too much support, right? Mm -hmm. And getting yourself to where you're financially healthy so that then you can invest in the experts that you need to be investing in versus throwing spaghetti at the wall and not having any cash at the end of the day because of it. Okay, so- if someone is investing in, or let me rephrase that, what do you see as the number mm -hmm. one thing that people are investing in that is not helping them, but ultimately hurting their bottom line or hurting them from attracting mm -hmm. the right clients? I think from that respect, um, there's two pieces. The bottom line number that I see the most overspend is usually an administrative support. They've hired too many team members too quickly. Um, that's a piece that I see overspend. Um, very often I see underspend in business investments, really investing. And so what we do with our clients is I give them a range of, okay, this is your current revenues. This is your current profit that you have from your revenues we give them percentage ranges on different areas of the business. And a lot of times I'm seeing very minimal on investing in your business, which is business coaches. It, maybe it's in masterminds, maybe it's in continuing education um, to further yourself and your craft. Um, that's a place as well as paying yourself. Um, it is usually a major problem. I don't know if I've had one client that came in and was consistently paying themselves an appropriate amount. Um, and, you know, it was a healthy place. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time women don't pay themselves at all. And there are definitely mindset blocks attached to not paying yourself. That's what I wanted to ask you with that, mm -hmm. as you were talking. So when we talk about money mindset and, you know, really reframing our thoughts around money in our business. Right. Um, I had a couple of questions listening to you speak just yes. then. One was like those benchmarks for when to spend and who to mm -hmm. spend on. Is mm -hmm. there a, like a benchmark or a standard of practice that we could adopt? But then also that the mindset of paying ourselves, where does that come from and how do we shift that? Um, in terms of benchmarks, uh, we do have some standard ben benchmarks that we just provide to all clients, um, no matter what capacity they're working with us. And usually, you know, marketing, it gets tricky because we're getting into the nuances of actual financial data um, in terms of giving those benchmarks. But <clears throat> there is a metric called gross profit. Mm -hmm. And this is your revenues minus the cost to do the thing, sell the thing, provide the thing, right? Sometimes that's team members. For example, I have a client that's a professional organizer. So she pays team members. She buys product as they go into homes. So what is left after that? After mm -hmm. you've done the thing, that is your gross profit. All of my recommendation metrics are based off of that. One, we make sure your gross profit is healthy. You know, how much do you actually have left? after you've performed your service or, you know, created your product. Um, marketing, what we typically like to recommend is five to 7% of your gross profit. Mm -hmm. And that is sometimes a lot less than people think it's going to be, mm -hmm. especially if you're under six figures, you're going to go, well, that's, I can't do much with that. Well, if you can prove your marketing is working, then we can push that number up. 
But until that is proven and you're actually getting conversions and you know how to prove that it's working, five to 7% is the max that I would recommend. Otherwise you're starting to put yourself in an unhealthy place because marketing is a risk. Mm -hmm. You very well might be flushing it down the toilet and you have to be okay with flushing it down the toilet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you said a couple of things. And one, when we look at gross profit, and I see this all the time, clients come to me and they say, you know, I'm doing all the things, but I'm not getting clients or I'm not growing. And there are so many facets behind the scenes in a business that create that result, right? Right. I mean, it could be lack of SEO. And you're talking about investing in your business. And I've seen people invest 10 to 30K on a website and there's no SEO. Well, if there's no SEO, you you have this thing you've invested in that's not helping you. It's actually hurting you. Right. And you know, it's that realization of, okay, and what are you spending money on? And mm-hmm. when I ask people to do this exercise, because we have to get to the root of the problem, right? And figure right. out what systems are you using? What systems do you need that you don't have? What's automated? Mm -hmm. What's not? And when I see the amount of spend on these things that are doing absolutely nothing for them in a business or are available for free, it's amazing how much money you can cut straight off the top. But I love to say as, as entrepreneurs, we don't know what we don't know. Just right. like in life, as I'm being a mom or whatever, we don't know what we don't know. Right. And so when you said so many people don't invest where they should be investing, getting the support, the help, the guidance through right. coaching, masterminds, whatever that they need, that is a major, I think, hiccup. But people think, well, I can't invest in that. I don't mm-hmm. have the money. But if you don't invest in those things, you aren't going to solve your problem because you can't right. see what's wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Well, and, and being an entrepreneur, it's, it is a lonely journey yes. and so much of investing in your business and yourself is taking that away is bringing you in community with people. Even if it's somebody you're having to pay, you're still in community with somebody that's guiding you. Now there, you know, you, you've got to do your research and you've got to really understand if it's the right amount to invest. Sometimes you got to wait. Sometimes you need to save up. Right. But the right investments can, will bring back a return so quickly. And it's the return isn't always monetary, which is strange for somebody in my position, but sometimes it's about your time. Sometimes it's about your stress level. Sometimes it's about your sleep. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, like the return could be non-financial, but it will ultimately be financial. It will Mm -hmm. trickle out for Mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. Because when you think about recognizing a mindset hiccup, if you can alter one, reframe one negative thought, it can open the door to so much more because then all of a sudden you don't have those chaotic thoughts. You're able to have clarity and then Mm -hmm. confidence. And when people see that, they start to trust you more. So, and your message is clearer. Like people begin to, you know, really, truly understand you are the one for them. Okay. So let's talk about reframing those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like what are the, what would you say are the key? I know you had three things that and strategies we can employ to reframe our thoughts. Like what are those and where should we begin? Sure. So the first one is doing that mindset shift, realizing I'm going to step out of entrepreneur mode and I'm going to become a CEO. I really want to focus on running a successful business. Um, it doesn't change how you serve your clients, but you, your sole focus isn't serving your clients. It's creating a healthy business that has mm-hmm. the ability to grow and scale. Um, the next one is shifting and it's similar, but it's a much more specific. It's really shifting to a long-term perspective, especially when we're in entrepreneurial mode, it's like the next three months, six months, you know, maybe 12, right? I want people to think five years, 10 years, what's your exit strategy? We all have to have one. We're not going to do the same thing until we die. So what is it? Do you want to do this for 20 years? Okay. What do you want it to look like in five years and in 10 years? Do you want to build this thing to sell it? 
okay, then we need to be strategic about that. And really thinking long-term really seems to make a massive mindset shift for people, whereas they're out of the chaos of this um, need to have immediate returns. The online business space is very tricky because the growth and potential profitability is so high. It's exceptional compared to more standard historical businesses. And I think people get lost in that, Mm -hmm. what's possible to what's realistic. Um, And so really starting to think about what do I want my day-to-day life to look like in three to five years? What am I building this business for? Like, what's the point of it, you know, in five, 10 years? And that mindset shift, while, you know, the first one's more about how do you spend your days and what are you thinking about on your business? This one is about making sure you're always looking past today, past next year. Um, that's a big shift that most people need to make at some point. Mm-hmm. So that's the second one. And then the third one that we've developed through time, because most of our work is one-on-one client support. That's just, that's my sweet spot. It's where I'm best, um, is we realize there is a money mindset piece and a lot of your mindset issues are external forces. You know, how your parents taught you about money, um, what was going on in the world when you got your first job, all of these external forces, but there's a piece of how you think about money and your finances. That's just innate to who you are and how you were created And I started to realize that working with my clients, I would present the exact same report to two clients and they would react differently. And I had to start to realize I needed to customize these based on each person's personality. Some of them, I can't give enough detail and I want, I've got to control it, but they need to see lots of numbers on their sheet. Others they don't need to see one number. They don't want to see one number. You know, we create a couple of graphs. We do some very large bumpers for them to put in place. And so through the last few years, we've realized that that information needed to be brought together. So we created the made for money personality quiz where you literally can figure out. And I kind of evolved four primary personalities And what we do is look at those personalities and then say, okay, if you are a motivator, this way of looking at your money is more in in alignment with who you are, but these are your weaknesses. And so how are we going to put in boundaries for you that aren't going to stress you out and cause you anxiety, but help you actually reach the goals that you have? Um, And so We have found once we implemented that and had all of our clients take it, we immediately were able to adjust guidance, recommendations, and how we present financial information. And I mean, it was so abrupt. Clients, you know, their shoulders went down. They seemed more relaxed. They felt more comfortable with our conversation. And the comments I was getting was, this isn't as scary as it used to be. It's all the same information. What we're doing in the back end, it's accounting, it's you know financial strategy, but how it's presented and how you receive it um, really seem to calm people and give them so much more confidence to have the conversation in the first place. Mm, that's fascinating, right? How the mind works. Yes. I feel like yes. I just talked um, on a lecture for 10 minutes, hopefully <laughs> that all made sense. That's okay. I think it, I think it's awesome. And I think it's very helpful to understand that there are external factors in addition Mm -hmm. to those innate factors. And, you know, we tend to hear so much about money mindset and the fact that, oh, it's, you know, how we were raised or, oh, it, you know, was our parents' Mm -hmm. fault or, oh, there was some trauma around money. But I think we're all created just like we are with, with anything else We're Mm -hmm. we're created in a way that, because the brains are so intricate. But the key right. is, right, that we can change those neural pathways. And we, when we practice mindset work, we can actually change the health of our brain and how we see things. And I think your example of this quiz and how you created this model is amazing because it allows people the, the grace to 
see how their brain works so that they can have an understanding instead of having that fear because right. money can be scary right. if you're not making enough of it or if you're making a lot of it, but you're burning out or you don't feel good or you don't feel like you're aligned with your values and all of those right. things. So, so yeah, it's, I think yeah. it's fat, fantastic. It is so, it's super interesting. And, and especially cause you know, I went to start my business for accounting and financial reporting, and I wanted to help people forecast and see how profitable they can be. And it's evolved into something so different. We still do all that, but it comes from a place of, Let's get to know you. What are your values? What do you, why did you start this in the first place and really help business owners be able to confidently look at their money? And it's kind of peeling the layers through the years of running the business on what do we need to know about you first to mm -hmm. be able to give you information so that you can make clear, confident decisions. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the ultimate in providing service, right? You're right. creating so much impact doing it the way you're doing it and truly understanding and believing in your clients to help them believe in themselves mm -hmm. than if you were just presenting them numbers. Right. Because chances are those yeah. numbers that the presentation of the numbers would just fall flat because one, a lot of people aren't numbers people, so they don't understand the numbers. Two, right. they don't know what to do with the numbers. They don't right. know what they mean. And so they just get filed. Yes. 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 Uh, if any client that's come to me, if they had somebody before, whether it was a bookkeeper or somebody else in our role, they never looked at the reports mm -hmm. ever. And so they're all there, but that's not usually the conversations we have. You know, she tells me what's stressing her out. And then I look at the numbers and say, okay, see this metric, this metric is what's causing you the stress. So what's impacting this metric? What can we look at in your business and your processes you know, sales, whatever it is to reduce that stressor, help that metric. And I guarantee you're not going to be as frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So Kristen, I know that, um, faith has been a part of your journey. How yeah. has your, how has your Christian faith impacted your business? I think more than anything, it's just given me, um, more compassion um, really understanding that everybody's personal drive and goals, especially women who are believers and have faith, um, it's going to look different. And so my piece in the financial realm needs to look different. And I think that is the biggest driver on my faith as well as, and, you know, we could have a whole conversation about this is, it's so surprising to me how many women are scared to make money and how often, you know, we can look at the Bible and show where it's not only okay, it's sometimes commanded, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we could go down all different things, you know, the Proverbs 31, women. we could go down to, you know, the sermon, um, you know, the, about the talents and mm -hmm. talking about when the Lord gives us something, what are we supposed to do with it? You know, we need to grow it. That's actually what he wants. So I think it's just impacted how I approach my clients and realize it's so much more than data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I love the parable. There we go. The, the word parable. like lost yes, my I brain. Knew. I, was I like, knew you were struggling. <laughs> like, where is that word? That's yeah. Answer. And that's in, um, I believe that's in Mark, but I can put that in the show notes as well. Um, all right, Kristen, where can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, maybe yes. hire you? <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, the website is, and it's a funky name, the Tequila Financial. It has a personal meaning to me. Um, but the Tequila Financial.com. Um, hopefully in the show notes, you can drop the made quiz link because it's so interesting just to learn what personality are you. And then we have added some enhanced resources on, okay, now what, what do I do with this? And we walk you through strengths and weaknesses. And as a business owner, what you need to do. We also are on, on Instagram. It's particular.financial is our Instagram account. Um, and you can learn more about us and what we do in any of those locations. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Listeners, yeah. I hope you found this information helpful. I know I did. And I always love to talk about these things and especially meet great, um, incredible women who are doing work for other women, helping them grow their businesses as well. So if you found this information helpful, please leave us a rating and review. Be sure and check out Kristen and all her materials and share this episode with anyone you know that may be struggling with their finances or struggling in their business and just not quite sure why. All right. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you all next time. And that's a wrap friends, a heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. Be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.